So, welcome back for the second lecture of this week. So, we talked about sentiment analysis. So, and we were saying that the one of the mo most important tools for doing sentiment analysis is using some sort of lexicons. Okay. So, where some people have manually annotated some words whether they are positive, negative and so on and given a new text you can use that to find out okay, what is the ma major polarity and you can use some complicated models also to see how it changes by using of negations and so on. But important is finding out whether the some of the words are having positive or negative polarity and that can be obtained by using sentiment lexicons. Okay. So, so there are many different lexicons. So, in this lecture I will just give some introduction to some of these and they are all available and you can go and download those and use in your uh, applications. So, so for example, the general inquirer is one of the most more popular lexicons, then MPQA multi perspective question answering subjectivity huge lexicon, Sandy Wordnet is something that has been used widely and then in the recent times the, the tool LIWC that is linguistic uh, inquiry and word count has been popularly used for doing sentiment analysis along with some many other tasks. So, it has been very, very popular. So, let us have a look at these uh, tools. So, important interestingly yeah, the tools I will be showing are mostly built for English. There are efforts and on so on using these tools to, to bootstrap lexicons in other languages and many such efforts have actually been able to build such lexicons and such tools but there is a lot of scope on uh, for doing that in in say indian languages okay some of the tools are available and many of these are not available and if you have to, to process comments etc in indian context you might want to use to build some of these also so we will also see how do you learn these in in the next lecture so starting with the first tool of general and inquirer okay so, as I was saying, they, they, they label a lot of different words. It is not about some, some 10 or 50 words. So, they have 1915 positive words and 2291 negative words. And they have labeled them on various different dimensions. So, whether the word is positive, whether it is negative, whether it is active, whether it is passive, overstated under, and, or understated. Okay. And then in the various dimensions like does it talk about pleasure, pain, virtue, wise, motivation, cognitive orientation, etcetera. And this all comes nicely in a spreadsheet where you have different words and you can say whether it is positive, negative and weak, strong and so on. So, let us see some examples. So, these are from the first few words in this uh, spreadsheet. So, you say okay, what are negative words? Abandon, abandonment, abate, abdicate, abject, abnormal, these are all negative words. And then you get some positive words like uh, ability able, abound, abide, these are all positive words. Then there are other dimensions like weak and strong, is it a weak word or a strong word? So, let us see weak versus strong. So, ability is a strong indicator, able is strong, abolish is strong, but abdicate, abate, abandonment are not very strong. So, they are weak. Things. So, this is also annotated, this is a weak sentiment, this is a strong sentiment. And then there are other dimensions if you can see the other columns of this spreadsheet. And this to this comes uh, readily available and you can use these for and you can see how to use that in your different tasks. Then I was saying, so Santi Wardnet is again very, very popular. So, what was this effort? So, you, you know you, we talked about Wardnet in this course. So, Wardnet has lot of different sin sets. So, what was done in Santi Wardnet? each of these insights were taken and people, so by some way of finally doing manual supervision, they try to label what is the sentiment score of this uh, particular synset. Is it positive, negative, what is the score, what is the objectivity, subjectivity. So, they try to manually label that. So, so they took all worded insights and they were automatically annotated for degrees of positive negativity and neutrality and objectiveness. So, example are like that. So, you have two different sets of the word estimable and so 3 and 1. So, J 3 is may be computed or estimated. You can see that this is like a more objective does not have any sentiment. So, it has positive 0, negative 0, objective 1. On the other hand, the second sense deserving of respect or high regard 
it looks like positive. So, positive is 0 0.75, negative is 0 and objectivity is 0 0.25. Okay. So, they have all these three scores. Then another important lexicon is this MPQA subjectivity lexicon. So, so again you can go to this website where you can download this lexicon. So, it contains around 6885 words from 8000 8, plus lemmas and 2700 are positive and 4900 are negative. And each word has been labeled for also for its intensity. So, you know what are positive words, what are negative words, but you also know their intensity, is it strong, is it weak and so on. Then there is opinion lexicon by Bing Liu that you can get from this the page on opinion mining by Bing Liu and there are again around roughly the same words and some positive and some negative words. So, this so you can go and download these data sets and, and see whether this can be helpful for certain tasks. And then I, I was saying in recent times another tool that has become very popular is the LIWC tool, so linguistic inquiry and word count. So, what is interesting is that, so, so again you can go to this web page and explore what this tool does. So, it, it takes 2300 different words and divides them into 70 different classes. Okay. And these classes range from okay, simple positive negative to many different uh, social things also. Okay. Like, so you are having negative emotions, so you will say words like bad, weird, hate, problem, tough they will be getting negative emotions and love, nice, sweet are getting positive emotions, but you will also see some cognitive processes like some words denote some tentativeness like here maybe, perhaps, guess. Okay. They might in indicate inhibition like block, constraint and so on. So, you will see there are 70 different classes in which words are explored and these classes make it much more richer representation that can be used for task like sentiment analysis also seeing the other sort of affective states that we talked about earlier in the in the last week. So, we can talk about emotions, we can talk about interpersonal things and so on by using this tool. Only thing is that this comes with a very small fee. So, if you have to use that you have to pay some small fee. So, in general when we talk about sentiment you can also talk about two different aspects. So, one is called the uh, valence and another is called the arousal. So, by valence I mean positive or negative, how positive it is, how negative it is and arousal is kind of strength. So, aroused means ok yes this is very very strong sentiment and low arousal means it is not, it is a weak uh, sentiment. So, so you can put them like a like an axis here. So, you have some quadrant this is like valence going from negative to positive and arousal going from low to high and you can see okay so here words are high arousal high pleasure like excitement it has been having a uh, uh, valence is positive for for excitement and the arousal is also high and you can accordingly think of a word that is positive but arousal is low like re getting relaxed so here relaxation this is having again positive but arousal is low similarly negative you can take the contrast between anger and sadness anger and sadness both are having uh, low val the negative valence, but in terms of arousals uh, anger is in on high and sadness is low. So, so there are again attempts that have put words in these two dimensions that what is the uh, valence and what is the arousal of these words. So, so yeah this is the work this was uh, so lexicon of valence arousal and dominance. So, norms of valence arousal and dominance for 13915. English language. Okay, and this work is licensed under the Creative Commons license. It is available for non-commercial use. So, what they have done? So, they have taken roughly 14,000 words and they have labeled them for the valence that is how pleasant or unpleasant this is, arousal. So, what is the intensity of the emotion? So, whether it is highly aroused or, or, low, or low and what is the dominance? So, what is the degree of control okay, by the stimulus? So, these 14,000 words are labeled with these three. So, let us see some example of the valence. So, how pleasant the stimulus is. So, these are the words with the valence of 9 and with the 1 and this you can easily see these are like what we are simply talking in sentiment analysis. So, 9 words are happy, pleased, satisfied, con 
contented, hopeful, they are all nine. And one are unhappy, annoyed, unsatisfied, and bored, and so on. So, these are all in balance. Then, if you go to arousal, so again, nine they are like stimulated, excited, frenzied, aroused, and on one you will have words like relaxed, calm, sluggish, dull, sleepy. So, you can see the degree of arousal also. Then, there are uh, annotation on dominance. So, like in control, influential, important, dominant, they are all having a, a, a rating of 9. And on one, you will have controlled, influenced, like controlled by someone else, cared for, or submissive. So, this is low, low control. So, here are some other examples with the words and the actual uh, fraction with which they are labeled. So, vacation is getting a high balance, yes, happy gets a high balance, whistle gets up to 5. Conscious 5, torture gets 1.4, rampage gets 7.5, arousal high, tornado gets high, zucchini gets around 4, dressy and dull gets low. And similarly, here self incredible gets a very high uh, dominance, on the other hand, words like earthquake get, get a very low dominance. So, these words are uh, all labeled with all these dimensions. With that, there are many other sort of lexicons also that people have used and they are also around on the web, these are some of the more important ones and most of these are available for download and you can use in your different tasks. But, but many of these lexicons were not created by, by, by manual labeling, okay. some of these were, some of these were created automatically and someone then manually verified. So, so what we will see in the next lecture that is there some way in which you can create these lexicons on your own by using some of the techniques that we talked about, by doing some sort of bootstrapping or, or by using some sort of co-occurrence analysis, can we learn these lexicons from the data. Okay. And this is again very interesting idea and uh, many lexicons have been bootstrapped by using that method. Okay. So, that we will talk about in the next uh, lecture.